Shalom, all praises, glory and honor to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakodash, uh, which in the Hebrew language mean all praises and honor to the Most High. His true name is Yahweh, by Hashem means in the name Yahweh Shai, is whom the world ignorantly and stubbornly calls Jesus. Rakakodash means Holy Spirit, loosely translated. All right. And the words, uh, that language I was speaking is the true Hebrew language, all right, the language of the Most High. The language of the heavens, the language of the earth, all right, that they spoke before the Lord changed the languages during the, the round of time of Babel, okay? The language of Israel. But uh, I want to do a, oh, so like a double honor to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well through the scriptures, peace to the hopeful elect. I just want to do a quick, uh, well, you know, if the spirit allow, if you know, however the spirit have it, but I just wanted to do a lesson on um, dealing with mercy. Reading the book of uh, Jonah. All right, Jonah chapter uh, four, verse. Mm, verse four. This is Jonah. So, like, you one second. All right, kind. This is uh, Jonah chapter four. I start the top. It said, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto Yahweh and said, I pray thee, O Yahweh, was not this my matter of fact? You got. Let me start at three towards the, to get the gist. Mm. I'm gonna start at. Eight, Jonah, uh, uh, chapter three, verse eight. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto the Most High. Yeah, let them turn everyone from his evil and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if the Most High will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And the Most High saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And the Most High repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. Verse four, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto Yahweh and said, I pray thee, O Yahweh, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of a great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. Therefore now, O Yahweh, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Verse 4, then said, Yahweh, doest thou well to be angry? And the answer to that is no. All right, because when you read, when you read uh, the account of Jonah, that was the whole reason he fled. When the Lord told him to go prophesy unto Nineveh. Because basically, Jonah didn't want them to receive the mercy of the Lord. He wanted them to, uh, to perish in their wickedness. All right. But the thing is, you got to be told. The Lord sends his prophets, uh, Je Jeremiah 28 and 8. I'll get that real quick. The Lord sends his prophets to declare how the Lord feels about what's going on. Because some people don't know, and some people do know, but they still got to be told the consequences of their punishment uh, or the consequences of their actions. Jeremiah 28 and 8, the prophets that have been before me and before the old prophesied. Now, we can stop right there. They prophesied. Nabat prophesied other under influence of divine spirit. All right. And to prophesy me to say before. So you got to go and speak. You got to go and say what happened. Like when you read Ezekiel 37, he said, I prophesied as I was commanded. All right. I'm going I'm to jump to that real quick because it's a commandment. OK, to go out here and speak to uh, the Lord's people. All right. Ezekiel 37. In seven, it says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold, a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Right. So he prophesied as he was commanded. Tazawa to command, charge, give, char give orders, lay charge, obedience. All right. The scripture says uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. OK, it better, better, better it is to obey. Then that will not have to uh, sacrifice. Basically, if you listen the first time, you won't have to come saying sorry and I apologize and all of that. Even though 
we imperfect and we go we fall short anyway. But there's certain instances where you you fall short on your own. You know? Like you could have made a better decision. You purposely you purposely thought you had a better plan or idea than the Lord. Alright. Uh second there's just fifteen and one. It said, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, said Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Right. Meaning they gonna happen. All right. People say, Well, well the Bible, well, man, everything was written. When it, the only thing it means to be written is it's just a record. It's just been recorded. How can you know anything? Or how can you get the understanding from things that happened in the past unless it was recorded? All the ancient heathen kings did it. They they recorded their, their conquests. You know, you got different tablets and different busts or different uh or different uh, uh cylinders, you know, different things that they wrote on to, to basically record what happened. Alright? You people never you people never you don't got no proof George Washington exists. You never seen him. Okay. You don't know nobody that's seen him or met him, but you believe he exists. Why? Because of the record that was left of him. Because of the sculptures and because of the, the history written about him. Okay? But uh back to Jonah. Right. Oh, the the mercy thing. All right. Jonah four and four. Then said, Yahweh, do as thou well to be angry? Right, well, the answer is no, because uh, Solomon himself, the wisest king, all right, which was Yahweh shining the reincarnation, he said, he said this. Uh, First Kings 8, he prayed, he prayed for, when you read First Kings 8 chapter, this is a, 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 a mercy prayer. I, I'm going to start at, uh, mm, I'm going to start at 46. This is, uh, first Kings. Let me see. Sorry. First Kings chapter eight and 46. It says, if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not everybody sin. All right, because what no one is perfect. Yahweh I said, the son of the Lord said, Why call is me good? There is none good except for the Father in heaven. So the most high, Yahweh, the only one that's perfect. Okay? So that's why if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sin if not. Jonas, you start off with the beginning of the first chapter, first couple of uh verses, Jonah sinned. First first couple of verses. Now, he was a man of the Lord, okay? But the, the scripture says all things was written for our learning, okay? So the book of Jonah is, is a, it's a learning tool. This is not a, 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 a lesson to, to chastise Jonah, so to speak. That was a man of the Lord, all right? And as, you know, that, that happens with other, us as well. You know, the same things that happen to these different uh Men of the Lord, the same things that happen when you on these accounts when you read the scriptures, we go through these same things, just a different setting. All right, it's just cell phones and it's just uh, uh, more wickedness and it's just little, it's televisions and different little things of that nature. But this uh, the the concepts are still the same. Okay, Jonah one and one. Now the word of Yahweh came unto Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. So look, go and prophesy. That's a command. Verse 3, But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of Yahweh, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of Yahweh. Right. So he said, right, right there, sinned. Right then and there, at the beginning of the book. Gone. But what? He received the mercy of the Lord, though. All right? 
I mean, a, a little chastisement came with it. Because when you read the account, he got thrown off the ship. And then a, a, a great fish came and swallowed him. And while he was in there, he said he was in, uh, he was in hell. All right, so he went through, through the affliction. Okay, 1 Kings 8 and 46. He says, uh, if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whither they were carried captives, and repent, let's see, but think, Shawab, to turn back, of spiritual relations, turn back to the Most High. And repent, and that's the point, to repent, all right? You sincerely have a change of heart. Like, you know, you think, you think about, like, damn, what was I doing? You know, I messed up, you know? And make supplication unto the in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, we have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. And that's what you heard towards the end of chapter 3, you know? I'll jump back to it. When you go back to... uh. Jonah chapter 3, that's what they said. Uh, Jonah 3 and 8 says, But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto the most high. There they make supplication. Yeah, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Right. Who can tell if the most high will turn and repent and turn away from his first anger that we perish not? Right. That's what they did. The, the the first Kings eight. Okay. Let me see. It says, uh, and so we turn eight and forty one. I mean, first Kings eight and forty eight. And so we turn unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of the enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land. That's why we face the east, because we in the uh. Over here in the Americas, where we at right now, east it would be the direction of our homeland. That's why we pray towards our land, not because like the Muslims, it, no, no matter where they at, they pray in east. All right, but if we was, if we was east of of Israel, let's say like in China somewhere, or, or you know further, then we would be we would face the direction of west. All right. Because that, that, that would be the direction of our land. It says, not like I, like I said, not like the Muslims. They just east. Just face the east. We just going to face the east. You know? It says, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee in all their transgressions, wherein they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them, who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. For they be thy people. Right, so just the Lord's people. You know, we're his children, we're his sons. You can't, uh, the scripture says, uh, the Lord ain't gonna hold wrath forever, roughly paraphrasing. All right, he ain't gonna be mad forever. You can't be mad at your son or your, or, you know, your children forever. You know, the Lord is not unrighteous. For they be, for they be thy people and thy inheritance, which thou brought us forth out of Egypt from the midst of the furnace of uh, iron. It's another precept I just thought of in Psalm. Uh, let me see. speaks about the mercy of the Lord. Uh, it's dealing with uh it's dealing with boats or like ships though. Let me see if I can type in ships. It's talking about how the Lord ah uh, Mm, it's, it's, it's 107. Hold on. Uh, let me see.
Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Psalm 107. I'm going to start at 23. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of Yahweh and his wonders in the deep. Right? See, because uh, with the account in Jonah, they was in a ship and they was in a, you know, they was in a, the open ocean, you know, traveling and the, it was very tempestuous, meaning there was a lot of wind going, there was a lot of waves. The ship was rocking to and fro. The scripture said so much to the point that they was throwing off, they was lightening the load of the ship, throwing stuff off. And it still, it, it still wasn't getting any better to the point that it felt like the ship was going to break. Right? It says, uh, for he commanded and raised it the stormy wind, which lifted the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble, right? They was praying to their different gods, you know, back to the account. They was praying to their different gods. They, they felt like they was going to die. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunkard man and are at their wits end. They ain't got no hope, right? Verse 28, then they cry unto Yahweh in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Verse 31, oh, that men would praise Yahweh for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Right. And that's the point. Okay. What I want from there. Mm. I'm going to get another scripture and then I'm going to go back to the and finish the account. Um, this is the wisdom of Solomon. In the Apocrypha, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, and I'm going to read 22. It says, Therefore, whereas thou doest chasten us, thou scourges our enemies a thousand times more, to the intent that when we judge, we should carefully think of thy goodness. And, we, and when we ourselves are judged, we should look for mercy. Right. So when you're judging, you should think of the Lord's goodness. All right. The scripture says in uh, in the in in the apographer in Sirach, it says Ecclesiastes sixteen and fourteen make way for every work of mercy, for every man shall find according to his works. All right, so you're supposed to you know make way for mercy. All right, make way for every work of mercy. All right, if there's a window open or if it's a door open, if, if it's an opportunity to be merciful to your brother, all right? All right, because like the scripture says, when you're judging, you're not looking to be harsh, okay? The, the, the scripture speaks about the Lord is long-suffering. Look how much he endured Pharaoh, all right? Because when, when, when his mercy is gone, it, you won't, it ain't nothing you can do. All right. Even you'll try to look for look to look for a way to be merciful, and the Lord won't allow it. All right. But until then, uh, Sirach sixteen to fourteen, make way for every work of mercy, for every man shall find according to his works. All right. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon twelve and twenty two. Therefore, whereas thou doest chasten us, thou scourges our enemies a thousand times more to the intent that when we judge, we should carefully think of thy goodness. And when we ourselves are judged, we should look for mercy, you know, because that's what we are hoping for. Mercy. Ain't none of us going to escape by the skin of our teeth based off the excellency of our, our, you know, this and that or how good we are that. You're going to escape simply for the, for the fact or you're going to be saved for the fact simply that the Lord chose you to have mercy on you. That's it. Okay. Uh, back in Jonah. Finishing it off. I mean, uh, 
verse 6, And Yahweh the Most High prepared a gourd. Gourd. Quata quai quana yan quaya 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 qua yanan quayak yanan a plant perhaps a gourd okay so Yahweh the most high prepared a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd, right? So the Lord gave, you know, basically shade from the heat. But the most happy prayer of worm when the morning rose the next day, and it smote the gourd that it withered. And it came to pass when the sun did arise that the most happy prayer of vehement east wind, and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished in himself to die and said, it's better for me to die than to live. So the Lord gave him comfort and the Lord took it away with the shade. And the most I said to Jonah, doest thou well to be angry for the Lord? And he said, I do well to be angry even to death. That's what Jonah said. I, he said, I do well to be angry even to death. Verse 10, then said Yahweh, thou hast had pity on the Lord for the which thou hast not labored. Neither made us it grow, which came up in the night, and perished in the night. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons, that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and are so much cattle? Right, so the Lord, like, look, you got this feeling for this, you, 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 you pitying the gourd, but you ain't did nothing, you ain't did nothing with this. You, you're not the reason that it came. You're not the reason that it left. This, this is me. This is all my doing. All right? So how much more with my own people? All right? The scripture says Israel uh, is his firstborn. The Lord nourished Israel. The Lord girded Israel. So how much more should I have? Because uh, you, you, basically you wanted mercy on the Lord. What about my people? And it said, it said that they, they can't discern from their right hand or their left. Yum, yum, right hand, right side. Okay. Let me see. I'm just looking it up. Right, because that the right hand or the right side represents righteousness. All right? And the left hand and the left side represents wickedness. So the Lord said, I'm going to have mercy... Uh, you know, how much more should this people at least have an opportunity for mercy? They don't even know right from wrong. They don't know they, they, don't know they left for their right. But you don't want them to have no mercy. And this is my people who I nourished up, you know, who I, who I made, who I created. But you want mercy on this gourd. You wish this gourd was still here. You wish this gourd or this shade had a chance. And you ain't labeled. You ain't cultivated it. You ain't you ain't the reason why it exists or the reason why it don't exist or none of that. You know, so the Lord, you know, he gave him a similar to basically said you ain't got a right to be because he asked him, do as thou well to be angry. You know, the Lord, was, uh, it was a rhetorical question. Like, no, you ain't got a right to be angry. All right. So with that, Lord willing, this was the edifying lesson to the hopeful elect. Once again, all praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, Kakwadash. Uh, double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone that ruled well through the scriptures. Honorable mention to the brothers prophesying in truth and sincerity in the hopes of being saved. Shalom.